outage, but we are back and ready to carry on. New England Whalers, they won the first pistol round. They would have come in with a big win. It was a huge fight that was put up for Cloud9, specifically OC, but it didn't work out well, Ben. Now we're into a one-on-one -on -one in the second round of train. The bomb's just gone down as Sonic makes his move over towards the B site and plants it. Two frags to his name so far. Will he get a hat trick or will it be the quad kill from DJ that secures the second round for New England Whalers? Yeah, DJ was the big player on the pistol. He got those two kills to open it up. Sonic playing this 1v1 quite well here. He's waiting for some sound cues though. Here they come. Good hear him move and that's easy. So the anti-eco not working out for the New England Whalers. So we, obviously we, we have been talking about the players chatting, haven't we? Um, yeah, yeah. The binds every now and then. So Rampage again, he dropped that same bind, didn't he? The same one after winning the pistol last map. Yeah. And then said GG. <laughs> and it was just like, right, that didn't work out last time. <laughs> so maybe he's a separate in the map, he's lost. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Potentially, because <laughs> obviously it's not worked out well. Again, the same fate is suffered. They, uh, they lose the responding round and we're now tied up 1-1 apiece. Flashbang goes out early as well, going to blind Sonic on the face towards main. Cloud9 are just gunning for this. They're straight sprinting out towards the site. The CTs are putting up a great opposition. A tenacious defense this far. With two clean kills, can they get any more? Floppy up on top of the red train, taking all of the fighter fights he can get involved with as he's peeking out like a lunatic, trying to stop these CTs from causing carnage. They have got the bomb down. They're a little bit paranoid about the peaks that are coming through. The timing is nice from the CTs, but the response is even better by Cloud9, Ben. Just booby left. Scope in his hands, but he's not watching towards the left side of Bomb Train. There should be a peak in a second, but he gets the first frag. Did he spot him out for the scope? Mottum, pushing up close and personal. And the Galil bests the scout in close range combat. Yeah, it's good to see this aggression, though. Like, that's straight up just being like, we, we know we're the better team. We're our anti yeah. we're just going to run out main, and we're going to take the fight to you. But it was a bit shaky at times there. There was some kills going back and forth, which you wouldn't really expect. It got a bit, you know, on the C9 side of things, it's probably quite chaotic. But ultimately, that's the round, right? That's what, what matters right now. That's the uh, that's the way you want to be going for things, at least. Let's see how these MAC-10s work, then. JT and Mottom both having one each. This time, they're going to send it B. So they go for the fast B play. They are pretty much just sprinting into a open site, obviously. New England Whalers, Ben, they put down a welcome map and they've invited them in. Cloud9, not even being so kind as to wipe their feet. Instead, they're just sprinting and causing even more mess as Mottum peeks out towards Connector and slays DJ with a Mat 10. Worst case scenario is if he maximizes his cash here with a weapon. Oh, and they're all just picking him one by one. They're giving him all the money in the world, Ben. He's going to be a rich girl. Oh. 21 HP on boobies, or this should probably be. He runs into the other Mac 10. <laughs> <laughs> the pre fire all the way from Pop Dog. JT just holding. But they keep the Mac 10s, though. So this is a bonus round. Yeah. A nice Brucey bonus. What do they do with them, though? So, oh, hang on. Look at the buys on the New England Wheelist side of things. We've got two orgs. Oh, they're going for this. Hmm. Okay. So, train probably one of the few maps where that can still work out, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see how that one goes then, because that is that is interesting. Because we did see some players try and pull the Krieg out still after they had an effort, but it wasn't quite the same. No, it's been very few and far between. Whereas I think at least with the Org, we're still seeing some use at times. Ben, the glass cannon from Big Ben Leet as he sprints out on towards Upper and he shatters like a wine glass that's not been held correctly. I was going to say that might be the save. Especially as the execute comes in. But it's a deep execute, which means you might be able to give a chance. But that kill should be the we need to pull off, save our weapons, we'll try oh, next. Yeah. At yeah. that point, you just bail, surely, right? Just get out, Jeez. run as far away as possible. I didn't expect the face. Like, obviously, no. I, I understand the play, but it's so risky. Especially in a scenario like that, straight back in, glass cannon, just peeks it, misses that initial shot, that's it, you're dead. Especially when there's no backup, well. though. That's yeah. the other thing, right? He's he's peaked no flash. Yeah. Like, not too wise. And you can see now the uh, effect of that. They take the AWP, they take an AUG as well. So the two Mac 10s upgrade beautifully. So that's probably worst case scenario right there for them. Mottam's still trying to hunt. He's on 8 HP. Bit wild. But nothing will happen with that. So Cloud9 4 1 up now. They got nine runs in the T side in the last match. 
already four after five rounds here. I mean, the one thing I still find interesting as well, because obviously the nerf we had that came in with the orgs was the fact that I believe it was the scoping accuracy that was increased. So it's slightly worse when scoped, but slightly better when unscoped now, which is obviously an interesting nerf to put on it, but it makes sense with it being a CT weapon, obviously holding angles right with the org. Um, so I don't really know how viable it is in those scenarios. We still see a couple of people buy it now and then, but it's nowhere near as prevalent as it once was. Yeah, not quite at its old strength, is it? No, no. Oh, that's quite scary. That was. It's like he's playing Pro Mod on COD Four. I was terrified. So a bit of a slower round from Cloud Nine this time. So you know I mentioned the flashes to you in the past, haven't I? About Cloud Nine. Oh my word, this battle. He didn't find a second place to be in there, but look at the trades what? back and forth. One man advantage now, make that evened up. 2v2. Suddenly chaos just emerged in this round. Yeah, I don't know how we've so rapidly got into that position. We're now left in, look at the flick from OC as well. The instincts kicked in there. His OC sense was tingling. It was very fast to launch his mouse across and try and peek. Oh, Mottum with a peek on Ivy. Cutting back the hedges and cutting the head clean off a of booby. One versus one now against Rampage. Still got a fair amount of time to work with as well. 44 seconds, he peeks. He was ready for the stop sign play. He couldn't get the kill. Rampage will stop him. And the mind games that are going on between the two teams are still developing as well. There's some good chat back and forth, isn't oh, there? Oh, they are giving it one another. <laughs> so going back to the point I was going through, so the flashes, right? So if you, you can have a look yourself. You can just open up the scoreboard. You won't be able to do it, obviously, on the stream side of things fully. But... You can see that the flashes by the T side so far, they've had a total of 42 enemies flashed already compared to the four of New England Whalers. <laughs> and that's one player that was flashed. I'm not sure if it was his own flash, I think there's no assist. Yeah, I think it actually Ooh. might have been as he bounced it on the peak. It won't matter though, as JT is just bouncing heads off one another. What? Sonic going to assist him on that one to shut down Pwn alone as he will be pwned alone, trapped towards the A site. The rest of his teammates, they have to scuttle as quickly as they can to get out of there and just save this Famous and Org. There's nothing more that can be done here. Yeah, not much can be done. The save will have to come through, as he said. But JT getting into that position towards Sandwich, a free kill on Booby, who's charging through a smoke whilst blind, I might yeah. I add. That was the other thing that kind of made it a bit weird. But the second kill kind of confirmed the round is probably done. Ooh. That was swift. That was. DJ proving he's got a better watch there. The bottom on the peak. Timing was perfect. Ready for a second, potentially. He's actually pushing. Sonic's holding the angle. He peeks into him. And this has really got quite rough. I mean, JT's on 2 HP. So Rampage oh. peeking this. I mean, you would have thought he would have got the frag, <laughs> but it won't matter in the end anyway. Bomb blast. It will clean up for him. So it's only the AWP and AK that are saved on OC and DJ, respectively. Yeah, a lot of casualties trying to force the issue more than anything. But I suppose if Cloud9 win this round, that's the money gone for New England Whalers. Unless yeah. they eco, actually. Looks like they're ecoing. So if anything, they're going to get a chance to build up the T side economy more than anything. I pretty much just want to play off DJ's hero, AK. I mean, maybe just go for the Pop Dog push or something. He does have the spawn for it if he wants to just try and sprint straight in. Gets aggressive towards E Box early. It's really satisfying watching players when, when they're blinded. Yeah. And then still seeing, obviously on a spectator point of view, they're not fully blind on us. They've got like a transparency, right? Mm -hmm. But you see the movement, how well they know where they were and where they want to get to. <laughs> so like just then, DJ, how he got into ladder quite cleanly as well. No bumping into walls or anything. So Booby actually, he was in a bit of a blind spot, but he does get picked out. DJ with two. So he's done really well with that gun, but ultimately you know, he needs to actually get three with a pistol kill somewhere. To get any chance of doing anything else. Oh, I mean, oh, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Were they trying to make it as silent? They were grabbing both acres. to get him down to get both the guns. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it just looked a bit funky from that it point did, of view. Yeah, like interpretive dance. Ooh. All right, well, both the AKs are going to get safe for this. Then they get away without really making much noise at all. It's a good save to have. Like, the utility difference will actually be kind of big in the next mm. round. 
because of these two guns. Interesting to see they've actually grouped up in the shed there, Ben. That's the actual set. Yeah. That was it. We're, yeah, with the ciphers. Obviously the smoke for some reason in that room as well. <laughs> just just radiating. Six to two there. Cloud9, they're already two-thirds of the way to that T-side total they had in the previous matchup. Looking to run away with this one. Obviously, this is New England Whalers. On the CT side, they elected to start on this side. Cloud9 pick, so you, know, you expect Cloud9 to have a strong T side at least. But even then, train, everybody knows it's a T side of map. We normally see the biggest comebacks of all time, really, on that CT side. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're going down to this sort of deficit, not ideal. Yeah, you've got to get one brewing soon. They need to start getting a bit of a buffer going, right? Because right now it's just far too stagnant, it's been too slow from the New England Whalers. Heavy group up towards the A site, just the one man playing towards B. That's going to be Rampage playing far back towards Connector with the Org, so he can scope in and try and clear the angles. All four of the players on the A site in nice angles, utilizing the verticality of the map as well. Talking of orps, it's only going to be the one on Pwn alone for the CTs. He's already rotated towards B, so potentially catching a whiff of the incoming T side. Terrorist OC! Oh my god, he had the Orpa Hound on the peak. That was absolutely sickening. I don't know how he's done it, but that was just brutal. He's ripped his way through the opposing Orpa and put a massive exclamation mark on the round, leaving us into a three-on-three -three now. Two of the players grouped up together, walking up as a bit of a squad, trying to trade for one another. They do get into the site. They're using their utility well to try and allow them to go for these peaks. OC with the timing, flashes down, peaks. I don't know if he actually caught sight of Booby, but it shouldn't matter. Positions ETs are in. They're ready for the oncoming onslaught. And they're winning their 1v1s. Sonic with a final killing blow. That'll be the AK Slaughtery against DJ. And Cloud9 get a 7th. OC shot. How has he done this? So it's from upper. But you know, the classic thing is the CT model. Unless you're looking straight down, you're, you appear a bit like, taller than the T1, right? Because the, the helmet tends to be a bit bigger. The big hat. Yeah. Like, it's a pancake hat or it's like the proper helmet. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, it was, you know, you're more visible, right? On his POV, he couldn't see the upper player. But as soon as you're peeking out that side, the upper player can see you. And he got him through the edge of the train, <laughs> which is why it was a wall bang, obviously, a headshot. But Tremendous. the big thing about that play, though, is a 3v3, right? Mm -hmm. And we saw Cloud9, they just spammed all the utility out. But because they spammed all the utility, they're like, we need to use this as much as possible. So they used all the flashes, smokes, everything. They charged forward, tried to gain map control, and then they played aggressively, which normally the CT side, they're so used to the T's holding back, let them come to you onto the site. Yeah. Instead, they just faced them all, which you don't see that very often. That's just the confidence flowing through them right now. Seven to two, it's a pistol half by coming through from New England Wales as well. Ooh, JT. Oh, look at him go. He's done same this before. Thing. It's the exact same play. The definition of insanity. And Booby doesn't expect it once again. He still just walks past him, Ben. Gets slapped in the side of the head. Sonic picking off far too many men. The face from Rampage. At least one. A consolation prize as he kills Sonic with the Deagle. But that's it. A single pistol kill. Cloud9. Eight rounds. That also confirmed that it was Booby's flash the first time around. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he limped through and through the smoke. But this time he didn't blind himself. And we did see, thanks to the new icons, JT, he was blind when he did get the kill. Okay, so double here's orb. the one change. Yeah, the double orb, right? Is this going to be any better? You've got one on Pine alone. He's been gravitating towards the A site with it. Ben, 1337. Can he get a couple of kills? Yeah, let's see how this one goes. Oh, DJ's actually just gone in for this. Yeah, he's very close. So this is the take coming in. A lot of utility damage coming through though. Across the board, like Cloudine taking a lot of hits there. That's huge. Was that off one HE? I think it was the HE onto three of the players and Sonic and Molotov. Oh my. So DJ still gets that kill, which is quite fortunate. But the trade was there. Ooh. Okay. Well, there's the second AWP already coming out. It's a clean kill onto Floppy at least, and just leaves three players alive for Cloud9. Can this triple threat get anything else out of it? Ben with a peek up, spots OC. Lays into rest. Booby as well, background clearing towards Hot Dog. All the faces go their way. Booby up on top of the train, living the high life, Ben. So it was Booby's nade that came through. He's on 173 utility damage right now. But 
I'll ask Sam, have a look at the utility damage again, or like the flashes rather. Look how many flashes the enemies have been flashed by the Cloud9 guys. <laughs> like, how did they get these numbers? I think that's what, what? 98 enemies flashed across 11 rounds? I mean, even if you just look at it as a stark contrast from 98 to, to nine, tea, right? Is the total comparison. <laughs> what? Obviously, on earth? how many of these turn into flash assists? How many of them yeah. are your own flash as well? That's also an assist for yourself, but it won't log it. There's a lot of like, that's just numbers alone, though. It shows they're throwing them to the correct places, right? They're definitely hitting the correct angles. Very strong forearms on Cloud Nine. <laughs> Precise forearms. Oh yeah. Good hand-to-eye coordination here. No. He didn't Talking take as much nades. damage as I thought, really. Yeah. Considering he was basically punished. exposed for so long, you would have thought you'd have taken a mass amount of damage. All right, this is where Ben's obviously going to be able to shine a little bit more as well with that AWP. Secondary AWP already had a frag into the prior round. Now, again, it gets the opening pick onto OC. Meanwhile, the Battle of Main goes down, and really, there's just mischief being caused. Oh, they bypass each other in the smoke. Martin walks out, gets past, gets past Ben. But he still finds the frag, so it doesn't really matter much. Cloud9 at least slowing down a little bit. They're not going to be able to just completely clean sweep them on their T side. There's still some life left in New England Whalers. Yeah, that Molto into Zebra. Floppy gets a chance. So... I mean, the Molly missed, which forced Pone Lone to be baited into that. Does he know Rampage is on the right, though? I doubt it. The plant means quite a bit for the uh, Cloud9 money. So they'll actually be getting, what, like 2 7 for this, mm -hmm. thanks to the plant. I mean, it's still not great, but if you want to buy, you can. If you've got like a set idea, like something for like a low buy strap or something. Certainly could have been worse. So the double AWP working out quite well right now. Although I will say it's been mostly one of the AWPs. It's mostly been Ben, right? He's been getting the opening kills as well as multi-kills on occasion. I think that's the crazy thing overall, because Pony Lone's literally only got two frags to his name right now. Whereas, obviously, Nuke, previous maps in history of what we expected from him coming into the series, we thought he was going to be one of the really big names and one of the higher impact fraggers on the side. Mm. So, we see Mottam. He's already out towards Olaf. So, JT normally is the player that gets sent out to this angle. Will he get flashed through, though? JT's flashing for him. Bottom. So he charges out through the smoke, went for the audacious play, but didn't really make a lot of noise. He's causing ruckus, but he's not getting any kills. The CT side protecting their necks right now as they're cleaning up against the oncoming onslaught, leaving it just on JT, Sonic, and OC. Sonic, blind with a flash that comes across from Ivy, keeping him in his lane so he can't charge out and do much damage. They're just peeking one by one with no trade potential either, Ben. Cloud9, surely this round is as good as done. He actually did tag Ben there, but Ben just held. He didn't get yeah, he just held his angle. Just holding the line. Oh, fake flash with the bomb. He gets some he style points for him it. From getting the AWP, though, because they haven't picked up OC's one either. All right, so only they one can one comes out. Yeah, yeah, they can rebuy, but that's a lot of money wasted if they go for it again. And Booby, wait a minute. I saw an MP7 get dropped then. <laughs> Inspector Jake, get on the case. Is there a unfortunately, loose MP7? Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't get Jake's inspector. I, I can see it in spawn, though. It's on top of an M4, so I think that was Booby that did that. Nightmare. Yeah, it must have been. Absolute nightmare, Ben. So that's a lot of money lost to the, uh, the old void. An F can this be old, blunder? Though? Well, AWP comes out. Pain alone might actually get an opportunity to really pad the stats on the eco here as well, one by one, if he can land his flicks, but the ferocity really isn't there. Instead, it's Rampage from the elevated angle that just rolls all over them. Gets two clean kills with the org. And of course, main man Booby coming in. Now, the scary factor is that this was looking good. Now it's seeming like quite a costly state of affairs for the New England Whalers, especially when Mottam gets the AWP. Good response, though, from DJ. He was close by, and the disc jockey shuts him down. Not too bad considering they saved both orbs. At least that that kind of helps things a bit. Yeah. But this, I mean, it's the last round of the half anyway. So the damage might have been affected in terms of the utility available. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, no, everybody's got utility, so it's fine. So the last round, everybody has four guns. Floppy, the only person missing out, just missing out on that Molotov. Or HE, depending on preference. Let's see this. A, a good recovery from the New England Whalers. Eight rounds from Cloud9. It was nine that they reached last time. 
So they are holding them to that standard at the very least. Potentially beating them to a lower amount as well, depending on this outcome. Here. Slightly better than it looked like it was going to be. Oh, this is just vintage Cloud9 as well. Pretty much what we've seen them doing consistently with these aggressive pushes towards the A site. JT just cleans up every time he goes for it, walks behind the stop sign. Oh, a restricted vision, but still finding frags as Booby's busted. Ben and Rampage are the last two remaining counter terrorists. I don't really think they're going to have a chance to counter the shenanigans that have been caused, Ben. Especially not when the bomb gets crossed like that. Bomb will go down. There's decent utility for this retake, but it's so awkward to get that. Ooh. Oh no. He was given a chance. <laughs> he yeah. really was given a chance. But alas, it won't be the case. Cloud9, they get the 90 rounds again. Going into that second half. New England they're going to have to put up a hell of a T-side to make this happen. They really will do. More to come then, of course. We'll carry on with the action when we get back into it after the break. Right then, let's see if this is the way the game is going to carry on. As currently Cloud9 lead 9-6 to six with a huge opening T side debut, Ben. Can they keep it up now they've moved over to the CT side? Yeah, that's the big question. I'm just looking at the numbers for those flashes. So it's 119, I believe I just counted there, to 19? <laughs> it, it is <laughs> mad. Like, yeah. It is absolutely ridiculous how they've been able to push it that far out. Yeah, it's a bit of a crazy one, but ultimately, I suppose, on the T side, you do get some free ones if you do throw them just yard, right? You yeah, just throw it over yeah. that wall. Obviously, a little bit easier yeah. to get those T side flashes off than the CT side, really, when you are going for the site executions, but it shouldn't be that big of a difference. Ooh, that's Ooh. a bomb. Oh, oh, no, oh my word. That, what? Oh, OC! Oh, my goodness, Ben. Just frag off the frag. He's sick with an AWP. But it transitions to his pistol. The Orpa's best friend. JT doing a good bit of damage as well as he cleans up. And it's just left on Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's incredible. Obviously, Motum a little bit terrified <laughs> of that encounter. Wasn't ready for it. <laughs> Brilliant. To be fair, like, it did look like it scared the crap out of him. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. He was on that site. He was like, how's a player on bomb site? <laughs> So ultimately, this, yeah, you know, I was going to say this should be the cloud around, obviously, quite cleanly, but they do drop two players in the end. OC, the man of the moment there, more than anything. Man of the game, really, with some of the frags he's been finding. Yeah, it's been a big one this far for him. 10-6 now. Do we New England Wales force by? I imagine not. A lot of deliberation, unless they're... Okay, so it's Peter Fist, so they're not going to be bothering buying into this one. We're going to be seeing a buy next round, so this should be a quite an easy 11-6, barring any crazy, you know, circumstances. Yeah. Alright, MP9, triple Famous, and an M4. What is Floppy up to this time around? He's actually going for the, 
the raw push. Oh, man. He heard the Glock change fire rate as well. So you could see him sort of start a step and not really fancy going for it again. He does peek back into it, but just gets beheaded because of it. So only one kill with the MP9. Yeah, just the one, but I suppose that was quite a bit of information in a way as well. Oh, he caught him jumping across. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Making himself famous with a famous Ben. Ferocity on display there from Mottam. Sonic. You can see how dubious he is about someone pushing through IB. Like, the paranoia is just running rampant through his head. Luckily, the timing works out at the end as he peeks and clears it. JT gets into a bit of a battle as well. Mortal Kombat against the last two remaining T's, and Mottam and Sonic will clean that up with Booby being the last man to fall. So 11 rounds now for Cloud9. And this will be the buy coming through. So the issue, of course, when you do do this, your buy is quite utility low, right? Yeah. So you can see the effect, players having to decide, do we want two flashes or a Molotov? DJ decides, I want a HE grenade instead of a flash. You know, you'll kind of, you'll have all the smokes, but flash-wise, you need to be very efficient with them. Which could be a big difference maker if you do go for an execute of some kind. So I believe they've thrown the E-Buck smoke as well as the sandwich one. Oh, that's... What was that? I mean, that's not good use of the flashbang. <laughs> I said you have to be quite efficient with them. He's flashed a bin bag. And that bin bag is blinded. It will be. The trash has been taken out. Mark waiting for the push as he plays just on the edge of the smoke towards Pop Dog. And the Pop Dog Punisher opens up a can of whoop ass as he swings out on the first and kills Pone alone. DJ trades back. And we're left into a free versus free. A bit of a standoff towards the bomb site. But Booby, with the backdoor assault, sneaks up, gets the kill onto JT, and is looking for more. Clean flick towards top sign. Booby, he's popping off, Ben. That was absolutely fantastic. That was incredible, to be fair to him. He's flicked very, very quickly. Oh, yeah. It's that first player peeking. But around which it felt like there was a bit of a mess on the actual initial attack there. <laughs> Floppy, I think he's just enjoying his name. His name. <laughs> yeah, I think he is just enjoying his name. The fact that we have Floppy and Booby in the same server as well is something else. In all, all the boys, mate. Ah. DJ Floppy Booby. <laughs> My favourite musician, of course. <laughs> oh, I see. Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, heavy damage. Ooh. The first bullet there. Absolutely crisp. OC with a fantastic trade in all fairness. And he gets a dink cough as well. So damage could well be done on a bigger scale here. If they get a chance to. Fenley, not allowing that, Lizzie. Yeah, no, you say that, but the only issue is they had so much map control, right? They just got into every crevice so they can just peek out and pretty much clean up one by one. Everyone falls. Whole lot better here for the T side, at least. New England Whalers, they needed these rounds as much as physically possible. So it's good they're actually winning a couple to get themselves back into the game a little bit. Keeping it close, 11 to 8. Cloud 9, though, the difference is now they've got OC on the AWP. Yeah, he was a major player with it on the T side at the very least. CT, a bit easier to use as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's see. I do like that monster as well. It lands on the Olaf area. A bit of a quicker one. And the double nade stack onto X right there. 76 damage to Martin. Just straight off the bat. Tate coming through. Rampage gets out, gets an early kill, and there's no trade to be seen. Alright. Four players left alive on the CT side. Mottam is low. He's taken a heavy chunk of damage, leaving him just on 24, so he's going to be limping a little bit. The T's are grouped up as well. You got a bit of a terrifying trio towards main, just groups and waiting for the moment to execute. DJ actually primes the flash over so they can peek off the back of it, and the smokes are going down to give them a little bit more leeway as well. Good utility usage across the board. The issue is, oh, will they be able to deal with Sonic? I thought we could have been a major player into the round, but it seems like no one is. Every single one of them just gets their knocks blocked off. Other way around probably makes more sense, but Floppy left into the one versus four now, Ben. Yeah, got to be a save there. So the score will be made to 11 to 9 in favour of Cloud9. Looking like they're in a good position still, of course, but you know, with this save coming through, you're probably looking at a situation where you do eco one, you then go for the buy, it'll be 11 to 10 at that stage as well. Assuming Floppy doesn't, you know, 
pop off, right? That's that's the other thing. The, the gun is always possible for getting like two, three kills, causing mayhem. Yeah. But New England Whalers, they're doing quite well on this T side. You know, they, it was 16-13, to be fair to them, in the previous matchup. Like, that map was actually closer than Nuke. So it's not a case of them being really bad on this map, but looks things. Pain alone as well, obviously still lagging behind slightly compared to the rest of them, but he has slowly been getting a bit more momentum to himself throughout the course of the game. Hopefully being on the T side as well, a little bit more freedom with that AWP, he can take some of those initiations and actually get back into it. Because obviously he was a huge talking point on Nuke, and the fact he was so quiet early game was really quite worrying. It's been good to see DJ carrying on with a good form though. Yeah, he's been carrying on that form, as he said. A big player in the actual nuke game as well. He was that player tasked with holding lobby, and he was yeah. getting the kills that were needed. So, nice double nade. Doesn't result in anything. Good theory behind it. Floppy with the gun, though. He's been trusted to kind of bait off of one of his teammates towards B. I don't think we see contact from him until a bit later on in the round, though. Unless... They should really let OC just stay here on his own or something. Like, let that be some like an information anchor at that point. Looks like you're going to risk it all, though. Go 5A. I do like it when teams do that. It's definitely a better situation than actually spreading out with your you know, USPs. It's good to see at least utility-wise as well. They're still maximizing it. Even when they don't really have any firepower. So smokes go down. They start to charge their way out towards the site. Floppy. Playing far back from A2, just honed in, waiting for the push through Pop Dog. But they can't watch both angles, meaning the Ivy is open. And Ben comes knocking on the door. They basically forgot he was there as well. They focus back towards Red Train, not expecting a second kill to come out from him. He cleans up on another man. They do eventually stop him, but at that point, it's too late. And the T's get another round. Now only one round away from equalizing the scoreline, 11 apiece. OC's been good for like two kills each time they've good. From my, like, he had the P215 ladder. He just got two with the USP as well. Yeah. He's on a really good game. The question is, will that translate to the AWP play, right? First half, we saw a lot of it, but we need to see it on the CTs. And we need them to control the map. Instead of letting New England Whalers actually dictate the play, like the tempo and everything, they need to be doing something themselves. So Ben, he's kind of guaranteed there's nobody in ladder. But there we go. That's a good start. OC gets the open onto Rampage. Ooh. And a second. Ooh. That was a good shot. Yeah. The Gunganeer coming out from OC there. That Mithril Silver giving him the power to fight back, Ben. Clean kills as he tides up two of them. And already that goes to show the impact he's been having with the AWP. He has been a bit of a star player with it when he's allowed to have that freedom. New England Whalers, though, they're just left with three players. Two of them towards the B site. Pone alone just lurking towards main still. Trying his best to actually get an angle where he can find an opener, but... No one's peeking him, and rightly so. They just slow down the course of the game. At this point, basically, Cloud9 can just play for trades and win it out. Yeah, and that's the theory behind having two players B, right? You've got two man advantage anyway. If your B player can get one at least, and the second guy does the same, you're in infinitely trading to win right here. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. This is very delayed. Flash will come in. They know exactly where that player is. Should be an easy kill. JT just needs to watch the smoke, or at least watch the walkthrough. Yeah, Floppy strawed the shadow, oh. so he knows that Boogie's there. He's actually able to just walk up against the wall. The flashbang goes in front as well. So as they oh. charge out, they bypass him. Pone alone gets a kill onto Mottom of all players, and then Floppy swings for the cleanup. What on earth? That was just carnage on the B site, Ben. A panic at the disco. I was surprised they were so bothered about that player being in the smoke. Like, it mm. felt like a bit of an unneeded chase up. Because if that flash lands in an angle where Floppy gets blinded by it, he probably gets the kill on the lower player, but he gets taken down along the way as well. Hey, there but, was so much more yeah. that could have gone wrong. Yeah, they allowed... It was kind of like one of those... If we had like a range, like everything as a box and whisker diagram, <laughs> I believe is the, uh, the the actual terminology for it. Right. But well, never mind that though, we've got some contact early. <laughs> we'll come back to the grass we'll come back later. To that. Uh, I'll get my pie charts to one side. <laughs> OC right now. Oh. oh. He is baking a pie. An ownage pie, Ben. Two clean kills off of the back of the scope as he picks off the first two. Very precise. And still pushing for even more. He is a hungry man. He's looking to get another frag added to the total tally. Pre fires on the angle. <laughs> he basically rings the dinner bell. And Sonic comes in with the cleanup onto DJ. Very weird one. I'm not sure why he shot. Oh. 
Well, that's the information given. You know exactly where Ruby is and Queen is taken. Do they retrieve for the second orb? Should do. Uh, no. A little no. bit too far Not away. Bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so box basic diagram, essentially it's within like a line graph, or like within a graph rather, you have it so there's like a range of, like this is the fixed average, and then it creates a min-max sort of thing around it. Okay. So basically it's like, if we took it as Cloud9's chance of winning as an average in a 3v5, they went for the lower end, like they were going for the minimum chance, because it felt like they were giving more of a chance for something to go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. It's basically just becoming like more high efficiency style sort of stuff. But let's see how this one goes then. So it's just a pistol armor buy. They're going to be challenging B. There's two players here. And they've both got good utility. Well, the only thing that New England Whalers are using Whiskers for right now are very reminiscent of what Cats use them for, Ben. To figure out if they can get into small spaces as they make their move in towards the B site. Certainly be some oh. choke points they'll have to contend with. And Pone alone tries to create some more space with the Tech 9. It's a big opener, and they sprint their way down towards the bomb site. They're marauding all over the gaff, and they're taking the territory as their own. They're doing fantastic footwork. It's up to OC to really be a big responding man. Fires off two shots with the AWP, but only gets one single frag. Three CTs remain. They've all got kits. They've got a little bit of utility. Two smokes to be precise. But they're losing that manpower. The battle of attrition is quickly slipping away from them. And the T's are pushing so heavy-handedly. They want to clean up and get this round. But they also want to maximize their return. And get all of the weapons possible. It's going to go 13 to 11. New England Whalers have pretty much got a free buy into the next one. Just off the kills they found. Yeah, that's, that's an awkward one to think about. Because you know for a fact... JT will be really annoyed at himself for that situation anyway. He's faced off of upper. He's whiffed the spray, I think it's fair to say. Mm. And he's instantly been turned on as a result of that. But even then, the other B player, Floppy, you could see the panic in him a bit when the flashes did start to come in. He tried to reposition, couldn't get it done. It's still a buy, though. You've got two ops in play. You've got three rifles, although one of them is a FAMAS. Utility, not fantastic, but it's, you know, you've got the firepower at least. This is a really big round because of Cloud9's economy. Ooh. I think that's the third round of the last four where we see he's got the opening kill on Rampage. Did he just failed the nade down the ladder, so he dodged the, the nade by going down the ladder. Yeah, and the nade <laughs> bounced up and just blew the window yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. If there's a player in ladder. Oh! Left hand peak. <laughs> Left hand peak, floppy. <laughs> Yeah, floppy frags, down and out. OC, oh, set a blaze, he's got to wait. They're thinking of a save there, aren't they? They're like, do we wait this out? They then put it out so late. What What was the point of that? They're saving. Yeah. So, in terms of the save, they're actually going to get three players out through Ivy. The only one that could potentially come into contact is Mottam, as he's still in CT. It just depends on the timing of him versus Booby, really. I don't think Booby would have heard it with the audio key. But he has just started sprinting to get away. So it's going to be the four-player save for either side. And the game gets closer. Going into round 26, it'll be a 13-12 to 12 scoreline. So New England Whalers, they're bringing it back. They're getting a bit more, ment uh, more momentum. I think, what, the cider is overpass, right, if it makes it there? Yeah. And overpass is technically it's the most common pick for Cloud9. Mm. So you could argue that basically Cloud9 have two of their own picks to close out this series in a way. So ultimately, that save was as a result of the fact... I, I did say it's so big because of the money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at the lap, but look at that bite. I love that. That's a bad Floppy not a fan of the left-hand peak there, is he? No, not at all. Not a fan. <laughs> big fan of that bind, though, of course. Jeez. If the other nade had gone through, that might have been another good set of damage that's Rampage. He's been dying a lot first so far this map. I'm, I'm just going to check the numbers on that. Because I know OC's entry on him three times in the CT side at least. Yeah. So thinking back to the actual first half of play as well. So Rampage is 1 and 5 in opening duels. OC is 8 and 2 right now. Oh, wow. So not surprising by any means because Orpus traditionally they do get a lot more opening kills, right? Yeah, especially off obviously that CT side, that's where he's really been excelling and it makes sense to basically that's another thing the whole time. Oh yeah. Burnt to a crisp as well. Mottam, not only has he killed him, he sent him off to the Burns ward. 
took some burns himself, though. That was his own molly, I think. Yeah, has scorched him. But Floppy does keep control of it as well, which gets a kill for it. Poen alone, it was right hand peak for him. Floppy this time winning the left hand peak, so be happy with that. Get the orb, walk away. Then tried to catch him, but couldn't quite actually find the frag with the M4. Floppy stayed in the beacon, by the way. Oh, he's actually killed him! <laughs> I didn't think what? he would, but yeah, he confident, I guess, right? <laughs> hey, he must be. Certainly fueled at this point. And yeah, Sonic, and this, this he's round been baiting really him the clean. whole time. And now they've peeked in finally, and he's just knocking heads off. Should get the final frag here soon onto Booby. Charges out. He's going to be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of players that are there. And Floppy walking away with three frags into the round. Pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, clearly, but that's just evidence of the save working out and actually benefiting in the next round from it, right? You've mm -hmm. kept all the guns. You've used the guns quite nicely with the extra money to get the grenades in. 14 to 12, New England Wales, they still have a buy, but this is very much last chance saloon. Right, this is now the situation where they need to win this round, and then they need to win again, and then that forces Cloud Nine's economy to go out of the way completely. They lose all the money from that. But how did they do it though? Because the double AWP has been an issue. OC on the AWP alone has been an issue. Oh gosh. Oh, they didn't actually peek off it. They definitely heard Ben there. Will there be any spam? Just the nade. Right, Cloud9. If they take this round, they'll get themselves the match point. And of course, that'll be series point overall as well, as they've already won Nuke. Grouped up, we have a collective unit of Whalers. Oh, he double tagged them! He wants to be sight. He has. He's got the collateral off with a shot, punishing two men. DJ was so low that when he steps into the fire, he's burnt to a crisp like a marshmallow. He's taken out a commission, Ben, and we're left into a four versus three. Booby, up the top of the train, taking the elevated peak. But let's see if he can still find some more shots. Has to cast himself across and drop back on towards the bomb train. The HEs are being chucked out. And there is a flank developing. Ben, 1337. He needs to go huge into the round. He gets in the rear and it's all down to timing. None of them have looked. It could be a field day for him as the ferocity comes through. He cleans up two. He needs to get another one and he'll take down JT. The adjustment is so flawless. And the quad kill is clinical. He picks them all to pieces, Ben. Ben, what a mad play. <laughs> I'm just so confused at what the player is doing running to the bomb site. <laughs> just, yeah. I'm just like, I'm getting on that bomb. But don't he take knew, the avenue. He was there and he's like, yeah. I'm out. Let's he's not taking down, the avenue where I'm he running. dodged the player though. You know what I mean? Like even yeah. if he's playing, like, peeking from backtrack, sure you just try and avert from that cross path. <laughs> okay, so that round has come out of nowhere. Ben with a huge flank and very composed. More than anything. Didn't, you know, panic. And this is a chance, though. Round 28, 13 to 14 in favour of Cloud9. Double up is still in play, though. And this B aggression, Floppy. Oh my word, he might catch them off. Ooh, floppy. I mean, they basically gave him a chance. There was a grace period there, pretty much, before they shot back. So he does get one before he's slain. Booby coming through with a ha-ha-ha as well. Trying to keep those mental games going. And right now... They are essentially on a tightrope. Either side is. And Cloud9, they're worse for wear. JT's low, he's on 28 HP. They have three players alive, whereas New England Whalers, they've nearly got the full squad. They're only lacking Booby. And they're trying to make their move out towards the A site. OC, oh, he sees the barrel. But does he realise there's another man there as well? Will he suspect it? And try and get a two. Clean kills with the AWP. As he just waits... Expecting the push to come around from Ivy. They do have utility. And they can try and force themselves out. But it's actually only the Molotov and Pone alone, so they can't go for the flash over. When that was Ben clears it. Mottom up on top of the train's done. And it's on JT. As he peeks out, Ben's watching the angle. And at this point, it's tied. 14-14. 14-14. This is the situation I had pictured, right? You, you win two rounds in a row against the CT side. They've bought into both of them. You now have no money left on the CT side. They, they have to either eco this one, hope you get a miracle, or you play for overtime. And it looks like they're playing for overtime whilst, you know, hoping they get a miracle with a flash and a taser, essentially. There's not really much you can do with that. I mean, not really. Oh, Ben's going to get challenged. He's holding far back, though. It's a little bit blind, but the vision comes back just at the right time. Ooh. 
opponent alone from the distance with the AWP. Firing off the warning shots. Surely, eventually, he'll start hitting them. He's going for the headshots as well. Overkill. But clean. Only Floppy remains. So match point is going to New England Whalers. There's no way of stopping that now as Floppy is just left in a one versus four with only a USP. He physically just doesn't have the arsenal to dispatch him. And they're all over the site. He falls, left on his deathbed. And now they need one more round to push it to overpass bet. One more round to force that. And Booby, he's got 13 assists right now. Not counting flash assists. I imagine that's off of the utility primarily. Yeah, 348 utility damage from him. Let's see how this one goes though. We've got the double AWP in play on Sonic and OC again. That was a big part of the CT defense. Yeah. Can they do it much else though? Well, I think the huge one as well is OC. 28 frags. If he can get to 30 here, I think this is where they actually do come back in for the overtime push. Just, he's been getting those opening picks with you all. He's so strong. Ooh, just need cheeky. to see that scope carrying on. Did DJ go back to... Did he throw a HE and then run back to get the... What? Mamalzo flash? Whichever thing he didn't have? Did he get the second buy in? I think so, yeah. I think the only nade you could do, though, would be the bombsite nade, I think. Right? Either that or he forgot to buy. I'm not sure. One or the other. What a naughty man. Cool if it's the, the nade one. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have to just make sure you don't bump into anybody. <laughs> So do you remember when there was that period in time where the buy timer was long enough you could get the first frag, go back and buy a Mac-10 on pistol? <laughs> that was mad. I find it funny that they nerfed that out. You know? Mm. It was super <laughs> creative. Like, as, as you know an idea, I mean? it was damn cool when you were able to pull it off. It was Dust 2 that was best, though, wasn't it? You'd yeah. like, sit in T-spawn if you get a kill down mid. Or oh, CT yeah. side, you get a kill up mid. And then get like head armor or something. That'd be really annoying. <laughs> Good from kills. Yeah, again, he just keeps on Ooh. going. He's just oh, picking no, them all to pieces, yeah. Ben. Well, that's it. He's reached the 30 and the prophecy has been fulfilled, meaning that we pretty much at this point are looking set to go through to overtime. As it's just so clean, booby on towards the site. A nice tap on the first, but he's not allowed to get much more. Overtime will be coming up when we return after the break. Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. And welcome back. 15-15, we make it to overtime between the New England Whalers and Cloud9. Ben, uh, a furious fight between both of these teams, really. Fighting two for now on the second map. Yeah, it's been very much a case of in the second half, the double orps powering through, right? Sonic yeah. and OC. Sonic in that last round, especially. But ultimately, he gets that 3k, which I would say he got gifted it a bit. You know, they, they, they just kind of go into him more than anything, but you do have to be there to hit the shots, right? So he did play it well. Overtime is a different beast, though, isn't it? That's the other thing. MR3, so three rounds on each side. You get 10k to spend. So double AWP is a big risk. It is. You can leave yourself bankrupted very early on. Although if you're hitting your shots with it, then it does pay off. And it can be an excellent risk to go for. Sonic, clean kill onto Ben initially, as he will take down Big Ben Leet. Leaving them with the advantage on the side of Cloud9. The rest of the T's respond by reactively grouping up towards the B site. They have an AWP of their own on Rampage. I don't think we've really seen Rampage donning the AWP too much here on train. It's pretty much been Pwn alone for the most part, Ben, so... Yeah, that's an unusual move. It was either Pwn alone or Ben, right? Yeah. So ben had it on the CT side, he was doing really well with it. 
He was the Ivy Orb, though. That might just be a change of play because he's not been doing too great in the opening kills. Or just because... Oh, they, they, they switched the back now. I guess maybe potentially just doing it off a of spawn. Maybe. Quite late, though, isn't it? Mm. Well, DJ straight down the ramp. He goes in. He gets through the fire as well. Best the Dragon Force as he beats through the fire and the flames. Gets both of the kills and the bomb can go down. Sonic on top of the ladder. Peeking over like a very tall man. Getting the info. Oh, the HE could be critical. Will it land? Oh, doesn't do enough. He was on 12, but it only hits him for four points of damage. Pine alone. Peeking from up top. Just holding, waiting for the base on top of the coil. It's an easy frag at this point. It's getting really rather risky for the CTs to do a lot here. And they've lost so much in terms of investment. Yeah, I have to say the flashbangs going into that B-bomb site just then were actually huge. Like, across the world, they were massive because we saw the Molotov go down. Floppy, he gets the Molotov down but loses the firefight. DJ carries on going. He had the bomb. So he takes damage from the tag. He takes damage from the fire. The flashbangs allowed him to do all of that. Huge round for him. And he's been playing so well. Like, we've already mentioned it once already. 29 kills to him. Ooh, this is a good spawn from Booby. Might take advantage of that. Here we go. Oh, my word. I mean, he got out, but he was slowed down so much by the tags and the flashbangs, but it won't matter because Ben revenges him. Comes through with the AK, knocking heads off all over the shop and putting them into quite a critical position again. Cloud9 struggling now as they're beginning to choke here in overtime. They're losing all of these rounds on the CT side and it comes down to a one versus two, a retake for Floppy. He's up on top of the bomb train, but that's where he's going to be left. Slain to the ground. 17 to 15. New England Whalers, they could have a flawless T side here. It's looking very likely. Like, look at this bike coming through from Cloud9. There's nothing to go off of, really. All right, the boot sale by Ben. Three MP9s, one scout, and a UMP. No kit, no offensive utility in the sense of, like, HEs or Molotovs. This is looking like an 18 rounder, or, you know, a full T round take from the New England Whalers side. Kind of scary to think as well because they got the things needed to start this overtime situation off. Yeah. Ooh, good tag. Shouldn't be anything else though. Unless they flash a player through. I mean, Rampage has to go anyway. So Ooh. they only had that one flash as well. They did try and get it in. I don't think it actually really went deep enough to make too much of a difference. OC, I suppose it doesn't matter if he has a scout or an orb. As long as it's a sniper rifle, he's going to be able the to noise. just absolutely punish him so mom should have got that audio cue right they should be reacting off the back of this floppy's there but no one's coming up her but he hasn't been seen it's an mp9 so it's not the best weapon for the distance he's got to work with you get the headshots off though should clean up he saw the player oil oil gets taken down the player on the site is 100 but opponent alone he can't do much he's low and that's the bomb down they somehow won this round there's surely no chance for opponent alone to do anything here yeah not with just 14 hp a couple of stray bullets and that's it you're completely extinct Walks up with the knife out as well behind the box. He peeks in. Good adjustment. A weldy of a shot onto Floppy as he shatters him. But he's still got to do that three more times. And everyone on Cloud9 is pretty much on full HP as well. OC's the only one that's been tagged for a single point of damage. Opponent alone with the smooth moves. Bounces his way around. Peeking out like a hitman bunny rabbit. But he's put to bed. Cleaned up by OC with the AK. His pwn alone gets dropped. And it does go 17 to 16. So one round brought back at least by Cloud9 at the half there, Ben. Better than it being a flawless T side, but is that enough? Yeah, the question is, is that enough? Uh, it's very, like, if you think about the ratios, it kind of works out. 2-1 is technically the same as a 9-6. It's terms of like, you win, for every two you win, they win one. It's like roughly the switch right there, right? Yeah. So... The difference is now, with a double AWP on the CT side, allowed for New England Whalers, it feels like they didn't have it that much. Pwn Loan's now actually on the server a bit more as well. It could be quite a big difference. So this is the same player we saw before. JT gets up to this moment. He usually gets flashed through. But will he be flashed through again? I feel like he's not going to. 
It's also the fact that Ben's just pushing out on the sideline, peeking around the back, and he needs to get these kills. But JT up to his old shenanigans, slaughtering everyone with a superstar spray down as he picks off a couple of clean kills and leaves us in a four versus two. The CTs are outnumbered. They also run the risk of if they overcommit to this when they won't win it, they lose a lot of money because of the investment they've gone for onto those orbs. Rampage with the org. Nice face on the first. Kills Sonic. Needs to get a whole lot more going, though. The spam through the back of the train doesn't do enough. But Ben, or if he would have hit the shot onto Floppy, it would have been very easily that he could have won it. He's only got the USP out now, walking up. JT's pretty much one shot. Smokes the bomb. Timing-wise, there was an opportunity, but it's snatched away. Scoreline is tied. Both of them on equal footing, 17 apiece. So this is where we really get into the meat and potatoes of this first OT. It'd be interesting to see, like, if we had an option to have it so... When JT is pushed out of A main in the first 15 seconds, how often does he get a multi-kill? Because I feel like that's quite a likely scenario. So we saw earlier on, we saw him get two, maybe three kills after pushing through that sandwich smoke, right? He just got two just then. It feels like it's a, an easy, like, 50% of the time situation. Yeah. They've just blocked one of their Molotov going A main then as well. So that's, uh, it would have been unfortunate if something did come out. Oh, alone gets the kill. Trade is there. Do they know this baby box? DJ, what? that's easy. DJ spinning the discs and serving up wicked sick beats right now as he's beating them all to a pulp. But oh, see, up to his old tricks. This is what he's been doing essentially the whole game, let alone the whole series. His AWP has been unstoppable. Two big frags dropping us down to a two versus one. Ben Lee. He just the mass them. migration. He's got to go the whole way around towards the B site. He's slowing it down in CT at least, and they have rotated over. They're coming out of the ramp. Molotov checked down, so he can't peek over. Timing. Gets the kill. Tagged. That's the important factor. He's left on 18 HP, but OC. He has the AWP. Comes up on top of the train. The angle was already being watched. And he's put to bed. Cloud9. One round away from winning it, Ben. New England Whalers. If they don't win this round, they are out. They will be 2 0 However, if they win it, we go to double OT. So again, we might as well just check up on OC again. He's got more kills than there are rounds, so he's still maintaining that more than one kill around ratio, which is crazy good. That is so, so good. Well, that's also what? Over the course of six rounds, he's had 10 frags? Yeah, he's had a lot. <laughs> well, over the course of five rounds, actually. 10 yeah, frags over true, five rounds actually. is huge. Because he was on 20... Well, actually, he was on 29, because you, want, you thought he got the yeah. 30. But it was 29, and now he's yeah. on uh, 30, 38. Yeah. So still, so, that's yeah. a lot. That is wild. So the B-bomb site's taken. They've lost the first kill in JT. But there's a player rapper. So this is quite similar to what we saw in the first half of OT. More so when OC gets that kill, but does he get punished? Ooh, Rampage. Rampage okay. is clinical here. CTs have so much to do. And such little firepower to do it with. But they're doing their damnedest and Mottum. Burning to a crisp. He knows what he's got to do here. No Sprint back and get him off the bomb. He's not going to make it there in time as he gets behind. He's killed. That'll be the defuse. It's going to be close. But it's do or die. If they don't get this, it's over. Rampage is just sticking it. It's the only option he has. Oh, Ben. Close for comfort. But in the end, the Whalers, they keep it tight. They push us through. Double overtime. 18-18 here on train. The difference is now, of course, the Whalers are going to be starting on the CT side. They almost had a flawless T-side start going into the first overtime bout. Can they repeat history again? Double up set up. Pwn alone and one for Ben Lee. Initially on that first half of regulation, Pwn alone wasn't hitting the mark with the AWP on the CT side. Has that changed? It might be a case as well that he's not been in the right position. Because it feels like Ben's been able to utilize his a lot better towards the Ivy area. Yeah. So you got to be thinking maybe a switch would be to put Ben on a rifle or let Pwn alone just... Or by Ivy instead. Like if you that way it's you know it's less cost for the main like main reason. Ooh, that was a lot of sound cues from Rampage. I was gonna say he's lucky to get away with no damage, but he took some right at the tail end of that spray. Okay, so a lot of utility has been used from both sides here. Like look at how much Cloud9 have left with. They've got no smokes. This will have to be a dry take. Just flashes and molotovs. Oh, they're just they're straight in. <laughs> They just all peak at the same time, trying to just overwhelm with the aggression and use that as the upper hand. Talking of the upper hand, there's only one what? in play for OC Mottum! Runs through the fire 
with a ridiculous amount of confidence. Ooh. So bold and brash, but Pone alone, flicking back like a lunatic on the orb. A sniper with a hell of a scope, taking out a terrorist or two as he punishes the first and leaves it down on JT and Sonic. They're trapped towards the site. Sonic switches out from the AK over to the orb. Holding in on the angle. Peak comes round from connector. Two versus two. It's being brought back into a winnable fashion. Pone alone expects the face, and it works out well for him. Sonic's barrel surely peeking out. He jumps around the back of the train, gets the kill onto Rampage just as the Molotov extinguishes itself. They both jump on the ladders, but he's still peeking, Ben. He's seen by Pone alone. It's a quad kill and a cleanup. The Whalers get another round, but barely. That's a crazy sequence of play right there. Like, Mottam with his crazy push through the Molotov. The flick shot from Pone alone, and followed up by a triple kill from Pone alone as well, not even just the single kill. Yeah. I, I mean, you did literally just ask the question as well, asking, you know, is he going to get himself into the game now? It was first, the first half, he wasn't really there. It certainly seems <laughs> like it now. He's here now, at least. Uh... He's so, not a monster. Just a little check. Let's see how many... <laughs> the flash totals are over 200 for Cloud9 right now. It's not even <laughs> worth comparing. Like, we've hit the point where both teams are on over 100 each. So, obviously, the T side, it does benefit a lot of it when you are on that side. You just spam them over the wall. You're probably flashing two, three people each time. I will actually have a look to see how many flash assists we've had from that, because that kind of changes things a lot. If you've had over 200 enemies flash, but that's only, what, six flash assists? It's really like, hmm. <laughs> Not as crazy as uh, you'd expect. But nevertheless, next second round of OT. Second OT, rather. Sonic's actually sent out this time. Normally it's JT here. It has been JT or Mottam that's gone for this aggressive play. We've never seen Sonic do it. Right now, though, he's able to actually push up quite aggressively. Pone alone watching it from behind the stop sign gets the flick. Down into a three versus two. As Rampage on the elevated angle was firing down death from above. Ooh. The Hellstorm of bullets really starting to rip them to pieces. Kept close. 2v2. Rampage waiting for another assailant to come his way so he can assassinate him with the M4. Ben scoped in on the same angle as well. Rampage starts to push up. The flashbang only blinds one, but it doesn't matter as the bullets are what does damage, killing him. Frustration from Ben as he cuts the air like a pancake. Just like a pancake. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> ben now, 1v2 though, facing from connector. <gasps> they have no idea. They're not watching it. He's able to get a clean kill. That's JT gone. Ooh. How has he survived? Pushes up as well. Here's the jump up from Mottam. Keeps himself low to the ground. Trying to keep his nose out of trouble. And he causes mischief. A menacingly good shot. A big round to win. And a huge clutch from Ben. There is going to be some fanfare from the Whalers for that one. They push themselves to round 20. He recovers more than anything there, right? He kind of... Yeah. His teammate was sold to Sarah on effect. For he, the, the wide peak from JT got that kill. <laughs> And he was just like, well, I've messed up. I probably lost yeah. the round for us here. You're dead, my bad. Yeah, but he gets the 2v1. He gets given a free kill, and Mottam, unfortunately, plays into his hand. 20 to 18. 22 is the magic number, bear in mind as well. 22 will result in a map victory for either of the sides. Unless we do go to a third of of course. But this is a much heavier play towards B. There's two players here as well. Rampage, or it's a right-hand peak. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Yeah. Twist this... his ankle for it, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kill found. Mean, at least he's not rolled it. You know, he'd be in agony. That were a paper cut, which is worse. Ooh. Unhealable. So double smokes go out. All the utility in the world being used here to just block off the lines of sight, restrict vision, really, for the New England Whalers. There's a bit of commotion bouncing into one another. I mean, they've pushed out. They've cleared enough of the angles. They also get a kill onto DJ. And Floppy overextends. I think he just got a read on what was going down. So JT, killed by Booby. Booby, really being a mischief maker into the round. Does more damage as he's massacring everyone he can find. Floppy jumps on top of the bomb train, but he's bombed straight out of the server. Ben as well with a final killing blow onto Sonic. And that is going to be 21 rounds for New Elam Whalers. They do what they couldn't do in the first overtime. This time, they get a flawless half. They just need one round, Ben. 
it's a flawless hop on the CT side as well, bear in mind. That's yeah. the big part about that. Rather than, you know, the 2 1 on T side. But this is a classic overtime scenario, though, isn't it? Where you have a situation where it's it differs from the norm of what we've seen already. And the CT side suddenly decides to win all the rounds just because the flow works. Back to it, though. Double up in play. Floppy, the one man towards B. They're going down ladder fast. That Molotov's too far behind them. They're already out. They've got through, but they're taking a lot of damage on the entry. OC with two kills. Showing that the superstar power that he had in regulation is still living through his veins. Three versus three. Floppy trying to get around the back of the site. If he can peek out, it'd be absolutely huge. But instead, it's JT doing all the work. And Floppy only has to come through with one. 21 to 19. Cloud9 straight back in on the CT side. With OC opening it up with some clean kills once again. That's put him on 42 frags as well. 42 kills. I like the fast-paced attempt, though, from New England Wales. Like, trying to catch them off guard. It did catch them off guard, to be fair. The Molotov was way behind. They didn't expect it to be that quick. Yeah, they weren't ready for that. So, ultimately, not particularly ideal. But Cloud9, they're happy to still be in the game. Two orps still in play as well. Lovely opener. Floppy gets to stay towards that, he'll drop off, though. So we've hit the issue where a lot of teams do. They get into overtime, they only need the one round. They sometimes force the issue rather than slowing down. Like, you, if anything, it should be the opposite. But well, where Cloud9 should be panicking. They need to be up the move. So that's a huge kill in terms of map control. But Mottom is in such a good position as well. Oh man, talking of making moves, DJ just dancing like a superstar right now in towards the A site. Two frags achieved. Booby. With a HE blowing Mottom clean out of the server. And we're back down into this. A treacherous position to be in for Cloud9. A two versus two. Floppy waiting for the ladder. That's the bomb and the kill onto Booby. DJ, he has to have a sickeningly good clutch now. Or the round is snatched away. Big frag. Finds the headshot onto OC. The bomb luckily dropped the full way down. It didn't get bounced up. The HE He's pushed in. in. He's on four HP. Floppy, you lunatic. Oh, Sprints towards him. And the body hurt comes out. DJ had, had such a good round as well. The awkward bit is, I think he didn't reload his AK, did he, DJ? He had five bullets when he was running towards ladder. Mm. Oh, I do like that. That's a confident play, though, from Floppy. Round six of overtime two now. New England Whalers, the buy is weak. Cloud9, they've still got the double up. They've got full utility and everybody. They've even got you know secondary pistol upgrades. And that's another opening kill. Going towards the second Northern Sonic, and that's easy picking. Collat hit as well. Ooh. I mean, you would have thought normally he would have been able to find that, but it struggles. He misses the shot, Ben. JT up on top of the train, Ooh. peering over the ledge. Ooh. Should see the head of Booby in the terrorist totem pole. Finds an easy frag as he spams down, causing mischief. Mottom peeks back out, and at this point, it looks like we're going to go 21-21 and take it through to a third overtime, unless DJ can do something miraculous. If the stars can align for this man, as he's trapped, being watched from both sides, flashes himself, and runs away in disarray. He's still exposed as well, so if they peek Ivy, he's dead. I mean, Floppy's there with the orb. It's only a matter of time. Surely this is a triple OT. I mean, he's getting kills, though. Made himself. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. That would just be sad. Just a matter of time, I think, is the awkward situation about this here. Because unless he hits some absolute worldies, there should be no chance at all. Also, OC's, OC's got, got the, the angle, angle, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's good spam, but OC's not holding the stereotypical angle, though, is the other thing. The smoke will cut off the angle, but you have to go back tracks now if you want to try something. And if he wanted to, he could smoke that up as well and get to B. <laughs> but he's taking a bit too long. He's so paranoid about somebody being on top of Green Train. You've got 15 seconds. Yeah, he's left himself with no time. He has to go A, which threw back bomb. <laughs> or old bomb. That's never going to happen, is it? Triple OT, OC, 46 kills. Man. They have all got first class tickets to the struggle bus right now, Ben. And we are riding our way to Struggle Street. 21 21. The overtimes don't stop. We've gone straight into a third overtime as well. The only difference is here that we're going to have a tactical pause coming out to at least slow things down for a second. It's crazy how tight this has been.
based off the fact that New England Whalers got those three consecutive rounds in a row as well on the CT side, I, I thought that was it, right? That was like the telltale sign of, okay, they've overcome where they're struggling. This is where they're going to be able to close down the game. But instead, no. The response from Cloud9, still as confident as ever. OC, not wanting to let his near 50 bomb go to waste as well and have this be a loss. Cloud9 still gunning to try and close down this series in two maps rather than a third and go to overpass. An overpass, that's the only thing that's probably keeping New England Whalers going. The dream of going to that third map. Yeah, the awkward bit is we praised Perrin alone for that 4k in the first half of second OT there. Yeah. And then since then, I think he's had one kill and he died first twice. So it kind of, I wouldn't say it negated it, but technically you may as well have written it off. You're now back in a system where it's basically just another overtime. That previous rounds don't matter. Like, it's just a case of first four, nothing else. Yeah, it was one big impact round and then basically just the normality of, of not too much impact coming out from him, which is worrying because we need to see him pop off. He was one of the bigger stepping stones of that team, right? When him and DJ were playing well, it gave him so much more room to breathe. Talking of room to breathe, Mottam really wants to try and put the T's into a chokehold, it seems. Taking map control off them. Gets aggressive, plays anti-flash, pulls off the frag onto Rampage. Timing could be quite iffy. As he did want to try and dash the Molotov down, he flicks back around and he will fall, but OC trades it, and there's an advantage for Cloud9. 55 seconds left on the clock. Really good team play, straight up there. Like, they both know exactly I'm holding this anti-flash. As soon as I get contact, you should keep your angle there, and then hopefully if I get pushed, you trade that as well. And it works exactly how you, as how you'd write it. Like, two for one, perfect. And you keep team in control if you want it, but it's not really needed right now. The awkward bit is you kind of need to, I was going to say, leverage the B control. Floppy's already seen them in. 25 seconds. He's going to let them get the bomb down. Sonic does have a Molotov. But they're planting somewhere else instead, so it's not the stereotypical one either. I wonder if the plant might actually catch them yeah. off guard a little bit as well. I was going to say, the double AWP on this retake might be a bit dodgy. But it's not a plant for upper is the other thing now. It's like slightly askew. Hmm. A little bit too far over. Just as the smoke fades, so does the life force for Sonic. Oh, that smoke. That might have messed them up. They're both having to go through lower. It's not for upper. Booby, hearing the tap on the bomb. JT seeming to just be holding it. They need to push through. We had to get him off the bomb, but the issue is, in the meantime, the other frag was found onto Ben as OC killed him with the AWP. That's a hat trick, and that should be the defuse. So Cloud9, get the round. Will be very, very tight here. Not much room for breathing. Again, look at OC's kills. 49 frags to 27 deaths. One kill away from the 50 bomb. Yeah, it's been an absolute great map from him. What we want to see, really, from an AWP on train. Right? Yeah. That, that's like the classic. We always want to see AWP's perform on this map because it is an AWP's paradise in my mind. Oh, it is, yeah. Just the angles and the way it plays, right? It's so nice for you to just bounce around like a lunatic and rip faces off. Look at this movement as well. So slick. Straight onto the red train. If anybody is there, perfect. Alas, they were not. It looks like it's going to be a BXQ though, straight from the get-go. So Floppy gave away the bomb site just then, because they had the man advantage. He's not doing it this time. He's playing towards that coil area. So yeah, that, this means he needs support from JT, which is arriving. That smoke, I was going to say it lands a bit deep, but it doesn't. And they're already out. No contact yet. Does Floppy know? They've been able to take side control. He's had to fall back. He plays in between bomb train, but he's been spotted from the sideline. That's the downside to it. If he wasn't seen, he could have denied the bomb plant and got the ball rolling for the CT side. Talking of going undetected, JT walks up by oil, slowly trying to push up to sideline them. Mottam following through alongside him as well. And the T's panicking a little bit as they reposition ready to peek when they want to, essentially going to be retaking their own bomb site. Talking of retaking Rampage, coming out, retaking heads clean off as he pops off on Sonic, off the ladder, bottom, like he's in the middle of a WWE match, Ben, dropping the elbow all over the gaff. Rampage was around, what? Yeah, he was back around to, wait, what? Why has he gone back around? He's gone from Z all the way to ladder. Why has he done that? He was there. What? Why has he gone back? Oh no. What's he doing? Oh. Oh, That's Ben, such I a thought big he was still con. There was so much more that could have been done. What? Oh.
That is awful. <laughs> that is such a shame. <laughs> he had the huge flank, but he was so concerned about the fact he killed one, they know I'm here. If he just would have committed to it, it could have been a whole different storyline. Instead, this is the position we're now left in. The cards being dealt in favour of Cloud9. Mottum, though, through the smoke. Pick the pieces. Rampage looking to try and go for his redemption arc, at least, into oh, the no. final round. Sonic shoots on top of the train, but there's no kill. He will get the follow-up off as he punishes Pwn alone. And all right, he's doing a lot. He's just starting to swing. And so's OC. All of the orps are coming out. And they're living it large. It seems like Cloud9. They've moved, Ben. They've got a new home. And it seems to be rent-free in the minds of the New England Whalers. As the only one that's alive is DJ in a 1v2. Someone's going to get a hat trick on the Cloud9 side. If they want to win this, they do miss the initial shot. But Sonic gets info. He hasn't gone down either. And that is going to be the salient point. As long as he stays alive, the pressure is on the Whalers. Yeah, the plant doesn't mean much other than the fact you now get a timer on this situation. But I was going to say, you, you, you're you against double ops and a retake. They're probably going to try and find an angle where they can hold and close off some of the bomb site. Yeah. And old bomb, that's perfect for it. But that's just a round on its own. The double ops showing how powerful they can be, right? They both combine to get all five kills. OC now on 55. <laughs> and Floppy's continuing this mental battle with Boofy. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, so Cloud9 now need the one round. Can New England Whalers stop them though? It feels like some of the players have fallen flat. DJ, he gets a kill here and there, but not as much as you know the run he was on. I mean, considering he had 41 frags up until like this point, right? Like the initial brunt of those were definitely closer towards that first OT in the regulation. Mm -hmm. That was where he was at his like full throttle giving it. He's oh, tapered man. off. JT, up to his old tricks. How many times have we seen this work flawlessly, Ben? This time, not so much. Booby, through the smoke. Doesn't matter if he's blind. He's a little bit like Daredevil. Look at this confidence now, though. They're, they're doing the exact same thing New England Wales did, but not as chaotic, and unfortunately, it's not working out the same way it didn't work out last time. So that's one round found. They need to find the next two to force that fourth overtime. But that's still, you know, that's a mountain to climb. It's a T side. It means the buy, you don't get as limited in terms of your buy when you do invest in the orps. I think it's also just crazy that obviously, like, the fact we're this deep into the OT, where it's nearly basically another map they've played anyway with the amount of rounds that have been played out, right? You can see that, like, any kind of strategy or semblance to what we initially saw in regulation, straight out the window. It's basically just a scrap, and they want to fight. The amount of like individual feuds we've had round in, round out is wild, Ben. And now we get to this point. 24 for Cloud9, 22 for New England. He's Wade. going for it. <laughs> oh, man. I like the confidence in the play. Because you know if that does catch people off guard. Oh, yeah. If you're but... not ready for it, it's completely ah, sidelined. It. That's so rough. It's probably one of the like only rounds as well where Cloud9 has dedicated more than one person to Ali. That's the really awkward part. Sonic holding this angle. There's no reason DJ will actually reveal himself in any way. Oh, God, the oh, gun his barrel. barrel. He actually held for so long then, Sonic. I would have been baited into peeking it. <laughs> 100%. I think most people would have That's good. Kill's fine back, though. you got to be thinking A is the play, right? Ben Lee, he's got to do everything here. Oh, no. Ben Lee has to go huge. Oh, he was so effective when he was playing towards Ivy earlier with the AWP, but up close by the train, he only gets one, and then he's done. Rampage charging through the smoke. This is the last attempt they have, and it's not going to work. In the end, Cloud9 close it down. It's taken some time, but they win it. Triple overtime was the course they had to play it to, Ben, to eventually win the game over the New England Whalers. The back and forth between Floppy and the boys the whole time as well. A lot of gems throughout the course of this series, actually. It was a pretty damn good one. Yeah, it was a hell of a back and forth, really. That's kind of the main thing, and also worth considering as well, because we already started quite behind in this yeah, uh, yeah. tournament, right? So we can actually confirm now that the winner of that game, so Cloud9, they 2-0 that matchup. Did take a long time, of course. Um, <laughs> but they get to actually face Yeah Gaming, because Yeah Gaming won 2-1 in that series as well. And they also had a triple... Wait, they had a quad overtime. They ended up on their first map. So, you know, we've ended up probably similar times, I guess. <laughs> Just taking a while, isn't it? It has, yeah. I think it was unsuspected as well, obviously, coming into train, right? We didn't really think it was... 
going to be as tight as potentially as it was. Uh, I think we did have a little bit of leverage in favor of Cloud9, purely because of the way the veto went, it looked like the later portion was certainly favored towards them. But for it to be a triple OT, and for this many AWP highlights to come out of it, just uh, kind of kind of blindsided us, really. Just a fun little one as well. So OC, obviously, he had 57 kills that game. Yep. Um, 11 into 2 in opening duels. 16 multi-kill rounds, which is 34% of the rounds, by the way. So 34% of the rounds, you you would find him getting a multi-kill. Like, two or more kills. That's crazy. Like, on its own, that is actually nuts. Like, I, I'm flabbergasted by it, honestly. Like, I think some of the statistics we had off the back of the series was just ridiculous. Like, even back in regulation, right, where it was, like, what, 136 flashes to, like, 30 or there was something? A, there was a 100 deficit, like, comparison yeah. to be made after, like, the first half, which... <laughs> Alone is kind of crazy, right? It is just pure madness. Uh, and I'm sure you guys at home are probably needing a bit of a break after that one as well, obviously. A bit parched, I would imagine. You might need to go and grab yourself a monster or some H2O to refresh yourselves and keep yourself energized and get those electrolytes back as there is still more to come here on the Beyond the Summit B stream as we get back in with more CS Summit action. Of course, Ben, our next series should be just as much as a belter. Join us for that when we return after break.